Hello everyone, welcome to Hackers SAT Math. Today we'll be going over the topic of heart of algebra. It is a topic that comprises a big chunk of the entire SAT Math section, but yet, thankfully, through today's lesson, we'll be able to tackle this topic, and by the end of the lesson, we'll just be masters of the algebra section, okay? So first of all, let's think about the keyword of algebra itself. What, what does it mean? It just simply means incorporating variables and solving for the unknown. Very good. So we'll go over some subtopics that do follow under this category, but if we look at the test statistics itself, the algebra topic comprises about 19 questions of the overall 58. And then when we do convert that or, you know, change it into the percentage value, it does comprise about 33% of the entire test. So we can see that it is a very important topic. And I broke it down for you, and you can see this in your book as well. Under the heart of algebra, there are four main topics. These three are the, are the important ones. When we look at the first one, it says linear equations and systems of linear equations. We can see many, many questions related to this topic. And the second one, simple linear equations. I'll go over the details and specific examples throughout the course with you. Um, linear inequalities and systems of linear inequalities. It's just an application of the basic concept. And the final category is algebra and context. So basically applying it to world problems and real life scenarios. So let's just start right away. Hopefully you guys are ready, okay? So open your book, and when we look at the first subcategory, I wrote down linear equation and systems of linear equations. So think about this. Wh what does it mean? We're just looking at a basic linear equation in the standard form of mx plus b. And when they say it in the plural form of systems of linear equations, we're just having multiple linear equations. We can change the slope into a different variable and a constant into a different value as well. And under this topic, they'll just ask simple questions. They'll give us an example. For example, let's look at one. One equation, and basically the question of this type, all they're asking for is if you look at the answer choice real quick, it's just a rearrangement of the equation itself, right? So let's go back to the given fact and look at what it's telling us. So the temperature is giving in the units of degrees Fahrenheit, and it's this whole expression. You don't even have to read this. So what do we have to do? Simplify in terms of degrees Fahrenheit, T of F. So let's go back and change everything. So the first step would be to take care of the 5 9th. And if we move it to the left hand side, I think we take the reciprocal. So it becomes 9 over 5 T of C and we have everything else. Don't touch it. And the final step would to be to move the 32 to the left hand side, right? So all I have to do is add a 32 here and I'll just erase this for you. So among the answer choices, do you see one that matches with it? I think we do. So a simple example, and all you have to do, you don't even have to read the question prompt. And that's it, okay? Nice and easy warm up. So let's move on to the next topic. Um, this concept is called solving linear equations and there isn't much to it. All you have to do is, whenever they give you a linear equation with one variable, it simply means one symbol like an alphabet letter. You have to just simplify and solve for whatever they're asking for. So in this case, if I flip the number of three to the right hand side, it becomes a value of seven and my final value of x would be seven halves or the decimal point equivalent to 3.5, very good. And the second one, when they gave us linear equations with several variables, the only thing we have to remember it's very, very critical that you remember this detail. The number of variables that we're involving must equal to the number of equations provided for us to actually solve for each respective variable. Does that make sense? So for the example equation here, when the first one states x plus 2y is equal to 6, and then the second one says x minus 3y plus z is equal to 5, we have two equations one and two. How many variables are we involving total? Good. X, Y, and Z. They don't match. Therefore, we cannot get the solution for each variable. That's the only conclusion that you guys need to memorize. Okay? Very good. So let's do an example of this concept real quick together. So if we look at the question number two, what did they tell us? 
if a basic given fact is here, what is value of 10x plus 3? Notice how they are not asking for the simple value of x. Rather, they're applying it to a further expression of 10x plus 3. So in this case, I don't really like fractions, and I think it's the same for you guys. So what I did was I combined the two terms on the left-hand side. So notice how you distribute the negative for both sides. So Let's get rid of the parentheses here. So it becomes a negative 1 half and then a positive 3 fifth. So when you add the two, it becomes 4 fifth of x. And the 1 half remains as it is. And the right hand side value just remains as 11 over 10. So what do you do from this point on? Yeah, I don't like fractions. So let's just multiply by the least common multiple of all the fraction forms. Can you tell me the least common multiple of 5, 2, and 10? Simple, right? It's 10. So multiply by 10 for every term here. If you distribute it out, it becomes double of that. 8x minus 5 is equal to 11. And I can validly conclude that my final value of x becomes 2. You don't even need a calculator. So I probably guess that. This may be part of the no calculator section, right? So what are we looking for? Not x, but the 10x plus 3. So it becomes a final value of 23 and c. OK? I think, I think so far, so good. So let's move on to the next topic. So in this part, I know that um, some students are having trouble dealing with the absolute value concept itself. And especially when you incorporate that to the equation form, it may be a little difficult. But all you have to know is that the absolute value simply refers to the distance of whatever we are looking at. For example, if I had a number line, and when we're taking 0 as our reference point, and I look at values such as 2 or a negative 2, both are two units away from the number of 0 on the number line. Therefore, when you take the absolute value for each case, it simplifies to a value of 2. So when we sum everything up, the sign, the positive, negative, does not matter. We're just taking the distance concept, and you're applying it to it. And when we try to incorporate that into equations, all you have to remember is one simple trick. When you see an absolute value term, the two lines closing the variable, change it to a parenthesis form and solve for the plus and minus version for both cases. That's how you simplify the absolute value when given in an equation form. For example, if they told us that the absolute value, for instance, x minus 2 had a value of 1, how do you solve that? When they're asking for the solution of x, do the trick again change it to a parentheses, and apply the plus and minus form. And all you have to do is separate it into two cases. Left-hand side, let's just write the positive case. Entire x minus 2 is the plus, equal to 1. And apply the negative for the left-hand term. And all you have to do is solve. So one solution, x is equal to 3. And then the second part, let's just not make a mistake here, and simplify everything. And we can validly conclude that x also has a value of 1. So when we conclude it, x is either 3 or positive 1. And if you do plug it in, it does work out, right? The same goes for the inequality equation. This simply means when we're comparing which is greater, smaller, less than, or equal to, same thing. You take the absolute value, change it to a parenthesis form, and you solve for the positive version of the entire expression, a negative value of the entire expression, and then all you have to do is simplify. So the first example would be to conclude that x is less than 5. And what about the second example here? OK, let's just distribute the negative sign so we don't make a mistake. Negative x, positive 2 is less than 3. And what happens from here? You leave the variable wherever it is, and you move on the values. It comes a 1. And what is our final conclusion here? If I wanted to simplify in terms of x, x, negative 1. And then this sign has to change because we're multiplying a negative 1 both sides. So that's our conclusion. A or B is the conclusion for this inequality equation. OK? And let's apply this concept into a real SAT question, OK? So let's do number 3 together. And what are they asking for? For what value of 
n is this expression equal to 0. So let's just transform this into an equation form. Take whatever is given, n minus 5 absolute value plus 9 equals to 0. But let's take a moment and think about the expression itself. Whenever we take the absolute value of whatever it is, what can we extrapolate based on the expression here? The absolute value refers to a distance. So let me ask you a simple question. Can this ever have a negative value? The answer is no, right? Very good, because it refers to the distance. You can never have a negative distance. It's like, hey, where do you live? I live two miles away from you. Your answer can't be, I live negative two miles away from you. So we can see that the sign is always greater than or equal to 9. And when you take that expression, which equals to a value greater than or equal to 9, add it to 9, can it ever equal to 0? I don't think so. There's a contradiction. That's why the correct answer is there is no such value. But let me um, take a further step. And what happens if I change the question here? And if they asked for this, then we can solve for this equation, right? You move the 9 to the right-hand side, so absolute value equals to 9. And what is your next step? You spread it into two. That's what I always do. Just don't hesitate and just spread it out and solve for both cases respectively. So we have n minus 5 entire positive is equal to 9. And then the second one would be to take the negative version of the entire expression equals to 9. You get an answer for one part and two part. You always get two answers.